Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, as you can see, it's going to be Super Adventure Island for the Super Nintendo. This is an awesome game. It's a ton of fun to play. It's got great graphics, great music. Um, however, the final boss is kind of a pain in the ass, so it's quite possible we might not actually beat this game. Um, but I am going to try, and uh, it's not a very long game. I think it takes about a half an hour to beat. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and give it a shot. That's the intro there, nothing too terribly special, but... Uh, the story is basically kind of like the same as the story in the original Adventure Islands. It's usually about your girlfriend getting kidnapped, and that's about it. Uh, I've never really cared much about story in these old-school platformers and so forth, um, so I don't usually think of it, but, um... So this is a, uh, big enhancement over the, uh, the classic NES Adventure Island games. Um, you have similar attacks, you've got this hammer here, which was, you know, you're pretty much your primary attack in most of the old Adventure Island games on the NES. Um, but you've also got a boomerang, and, uh, if you collect enough of these power-ups, uh, weapon power-ups, so now, see, I picked up another one, and another one. Um, I can now throw three of them. If I pick up another one, I think it's gonna turn into fire, basically. And use the boomerang. Uh, we, we're also on the skateboard, which is a very traditional Adventure Island. Um, Super Adventure Island was very much in the vein of a lot of other uh, NES to Super Nintendo games, where uh, they basically took you know the classic concept and just made it bigger and better. They didn't really flesh out the style of gameplay or anything like that. Like the gameplay in this is still very basic, but the graphics are. Are, are bright and colorful, the sprites are huge, um, the soundtrack is just, uh, so much beefier than it ever was before, and a hell of a lot more funky than it was before, for that matter. Um, and you can also shoot up now, which is very useful. So like I said, you've got, uh, you know, your fireball has turned into, or your attack, sorry, has turned into a fireball, which is the most powerful iteration of your attacks. And when you see these right here, you hear it sort of like clanking, you can jump at a very specific spot. There it is. And this is a bonus level. It's gonna give us some, uh, some more point icons. Uh, and if we can get- if we can get through the whole thing, it'll give us an extra life as well. Just like that. <clears throat> we're gonna need every extra life we can get, I think, if we're gonna beat this. Uh, what I decided, uh, beforehand is that, uh, we're not gonna continue in this game. I'm pretty sure you get continues, and, um... If we have to continue, I'm gonna stop, basically. So, uh, my limitation in this Let's Play is to try to beat it with whatever lives I have. And, um, if I can't do it, then, uh, we don't do it. Uh, when we get to the final boss, hopefully I'll just manage to beat him on my first try, because if I don't, it's gonna be, uh, even extra difficult. Uh, because you won't be as powered up at the final boss if you die at him. Basically, you get shot back to a checkpoint, and there's not enough power-ups to be fully powered up by the time you get back to the final boss again, so... But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so we've got this, uh, stage, and then we're gonna be at the boss of this level. So the game's not very long, it's only got like five or six worlds or something like that. And, uh, each world basically has four stages within it. Uh, the stages aren't terribly long, uh, nor are they terribly difficult, for the most part. I don't really think any of them are really challenging at all until the final, final level. Um, so something I haven't really explained at all yet is, um... Uh, for those of you guys that have never played an Adventure Island game before, um... Actually, let me switch back over to the, uh, the hammer. I know the hammer is going to be useful for the boss. Uh, so in Adventure Island, you've always had a time slash health meter at the top of the screen. Um, uh, basically, that yellow bar at the top is constantly ticking down. Uh, it acts as your health, so if, if I go and I touch certain objects, like rocks on the ground or something like that, I stumble over them, and I lose a little bit of that meter. Uh, that meter is constantly ticking down as well. So you can see it just lost a block, it lost another block. Uh, picking up fruit replenishes that. So I just got a fruit, and another one, and another one. 
Looks like each fruit pretty much just gives you one block back. Uh, if you want the biggest scores in the game, you want to try to try to have a full health bar by the end of each level. Um, but you also don't want it to run out because if it does, then you die. Now, what I've also found in this game is that uh, the whole life and health bar thing, time bar, doesn't really um, doesn't really matter that much in this game. You usually get through each level like before it's even counted, like halfway down. Uh, it's it's a stark contrast to the old Adventure Islands on the NES, the first three games, because um, those levels got so hard that you would literally have to run through them almost perfectly before, uh, otherwise your your health bar would run out or your timer would run out. Uh, it was insanely difficult, and you never really encounter that in this game, uh, for better or for worse. This is very much a relaxed kind of game. You can just kind of like chill back, lay back, and play it and have fun. It's not terribly difficult. Um, it is going to give like casual players a run for their money later on in the game, but aside from that, uh, it's a pretty easy game, all things considered. Um, So one of the good things about the skateboard is that uh, it basically gives you an extra hit you can take. So you can get onto the skateboard and the skateboard's constantly pushing you forward. So, you know, you have to keep moving. You can't really stop with the skateboard, unfortunately. Um, but you do get an extra uh, a hit that you can take, basically. Um, I haven't really demonstrated it yet, but at Super Adventure Island is one of those games where it's one hit kills, basically. So if I touch anything that's not like a rock on the ground, uh, I die instantly, unfortunately, so... Now this is where they start throwing enemies uh, behind you as well, so you gotta watch out for that. Like, there's gonna be a penguin that comes up here, I believe. Is it here? No, it's not right here. I'm thinking of a different section. Whoa! And of course, uh, Master Higgins can't swim. Master Higgins is the name of the main character here. Yeah, that was a bummer. I wasn't expecting to just fall down like that. I don't usually do that when I play this game. Uh, the controls are a little bit slippery. Uh, maybe not the controls so much as the, the movement of your character is a little bit slippery, so... Uh, you do have to watch out for that. And be careful about that. I think it's... yeah, it's... Whoa, I did it again! Really? Oh, that's not gonna bode well. Yeah, that's horrible, man. I, I don't even think I've ever done that before. <laughs> Alright, let's take this extra slow then. So one thing you can do in this game is if you hold down and jump, you'll do a super jump. Ooh, bonus level. Cool. Maybe I can get that extra life back. Or that lost life back. Let's see. Some of these bonus stages start becoming a little confusing with like the patterns of the platforms. Got it. Nice. Oh, I got two extra lives from that. Great. I still can't believe I died twice. <laughs> that was crazy. Like, I, there's a very specific part there that I know I, I sometimes die at, but any other part, I'm just like, I, I don't think I've ever died at any other part in this level. Um, so here we get eaten up by a whale, and this is our first truly underwater level. And uh, you basically have to swim and uh, not go beneath the bottom of the screen. If you go beneath the bottom of the screen, then you die. These water levels are pretty basic. It's not usually anything too terribly complex. You know, a couple of the eels might have some, like, four-way projectiles or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty relaxing. You just go and you swim. You shoot up or down with the boomerang. I prefer to use the boomerang here, um, just because it's easier. But what I'm probably going to end up doing is switching over to the hammer. 
I think these underwater bosses typically uh, benefit benefit from using the, the hammer. And you'll see what I mean once we get to the bosses. And a lot of times, uh, if you shoot behind the exit, there's some hidden fruits and so forth. So if you're going for points, you definitely want to do that because it refills your health bar and you get points for picking up the fruits. Your timer meter always resets for every new level, so you don't have to panic. You know, if, you're, if your health is low and you get to the exit, not a big deal, it's going to re reset anyway. Yeah, so this is why I wanted the, uh, the hammer. Because the dude's arms are, um... Oh, I never realized you could shoot the hammer down. That's interesting. The arc is really helpful here. That's why you want the, uh, the hammer. And a good thing about the fire is that sometimes it goes through that guy's arms. Got it. And I don't think that'll happen if you have, uh, the standard hammer. So basically what happens is you get the hammer or a weapon, either the hammer or the boomerang, it's like three times, I think, you'll get it. No, it's... I think you can pick it up twice, then you could throw it three times. Because you always start off with, oh, you know, one shot, and then you pick up another hammer to do two shots, Pick up a third for three shots, and then... Wait, no. I'm a dumbass. Um, so you always start off with one. So you can throw, like, one boomerang. And you pick up... Then you pick up your first one. That'll give you your ability to shoot two boomerangs out. You pick up your second, which will allow you to shoot three. And then the fourth... Or I should say the, the third one you actually pick up... I think is what turns into fire? Yeah, that makes sense. It's gotta be three power-ups will turn into fire, basically. Alright, so this level, actually, what you want to do is actually take it relatively slowly. And what you really want to do is be shooting up a lot as well. Because you've got these little bugs in the trees. That, uh, like right here. They try to just come down in a uh, circular manner. And if you jump up this level too quickly, what happens is a lot of times they'll just, they'll hit you, and you'll die. So this was a level that always gave me trouble back in the day. Any, any vertical stage like this where you're going up vertically... ...can be pretty dangerous to just go through really fast. I'm gonna come up here, I don't think there's anything up here, but just in case... Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm pretty sure there's a bonus level on this level as well, or a bonus level on this stage, but... I don't know where all the bonus stages are, I just, I know where a couple are, and if I happen to get any others, it's just sheer luck, basically. Alright, so we're gonna get a skateboard on this level. And there it is. Not for long, of course. The boomerang is my favorite weapon of the two because it, it's long range compared to the hammer. So for levels like this, it's extremely useful. And actually, it's... Really, it's the most useful weapon out of the two. You can literally just take your time and just throw out projectiles, then move forward slowly. That's really how you want to do it. Alright, and so the level after this is going to be the boss fight. And I believe, I believe the boss fight is a dragon. And we have to dodge some fire and so forth on that level. 
or that boss fight. So like I said, this game's not very long at all. You can actually get through the game in probably about a half an hour, maybe less, maybe even like 20 minutes. If you do it just right your first time, like if you don't die. Uh, you know, if I didn't die twice, we would probably be like a level or two ahead right now. Sorry. <coughs> Jeez, this boss... Oh, sorry, I'm getting stuff stuck in my throat somehow. Uh, this boss, you gotta be a little careful, because you've got fire... ...that drops from, the, ...these big black holes. Uh, so you need to watch out for that. That's the big threat on this level, and also, as you saw, the boss actually sped up. Uh, and if you fall off the boss, you basically fall into lava as well. So we've got six lives, so after losing two, that means we had eight lives total. Which I'm surprised we had that many lives. So we got a good chance to get through the end of the game. Well, I don't know, man. The final boss is just a major pain in this game. Um, it's actually one of my least favorite, um, one of my least favorite final bosses uh, out of you know the 16-bit generation that I've played. Um, you guys will see exactly what I mean once we get to it. And uh, one of the big problems with the final boss is that if you die, you get shot back to a, a checkpoint. Uh, and you've got to do like half of the level over again before you can take another shot at the boss. And I know that's very typical with old school games, but with like the pseudo randomish, randomized nature of the final boss and the fact that you die in one hit, it just makes it a, a frustrating proposition, basically. <clears throat> Man, I don't know what's wrong with my throat. <laughs> Ugh. I'm feeling weird right now. That was odd. So this Let's Play was actually completely unplanned. I, I literally just did my Let's Play for Mortal Kombat 2, which you guys probably saw me upload a couple of days ago. Um, and I was like, you know what, I got enough time, I might as well just do another Let's Play. And I've been meaning to do a Let's Play of this game for quite some time, so here we are now. Alright, there's gonna be a bonus level up here. There we go. Got it. We're swimming in extra lives, guys. Look at that. Look at all those, like, little... Oh, I forgot about the guys jumping up from the bottom. Yeah, this is another level you gotta be really careful at, because guys will follow you up, basically. And it's gonna be a little bit trickier now, since I don't have, uh... I don't have a weapon. And, uh, if your weapon's not powered up either... Oh my god, he followed me up too? If your weapon's not powered up, these guys take multiple hits to take out as well, so... It's exactly why I like having the boomerang on this part, because you can shoot down. You can't shoot down with the axe, unless you're underwater for some odd reason. There's the boomerang. So not only do you guys- do you have guys above you, you've got guys below you too, so... There we go. Not my time's about to run out. Which again, doesn't usually happen. Alright, so the next level is going to be another water stage. We have to super jump over here, basically. 
So that was tricky. I don't usually die at that level, but if you uh, if you let your guard down, you probably will die. Just as you saw, those guys are just constantly coming up from the bottom of the screen, and I just wasn't paying attention. So we lost a couple lives there. I actually don't mind losing some lives, to be honest with you. Like, if we get to the last level with, like, two or three lives, I'll actually be happy, because that'll mean I have to try the final boss less times. Because I know I'm probably not going to beat the final boss. Uh, I mean, maybe I'll get lucky, you know? It's one of those let's plays where I'm not really expecting to finish it. Um, but, you know, I could surprise myself. And you guys. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been really nice if they allowed you to throw the hammer directly downwards, vertically, um, when you're not in, in water. Like, if I could throw the hammer down in that previous level, that would have been really, really useful. So if I really wanted to, I could literally just go for all the, uh, you know, the point icons and health refills, but I'm just like, ah, I don't really care that much. It's not, you know, necessary. A lot of times when I play the game by myself, I will do that, but when I'm playing for, like, a Let's Play, I'm just like, eh, I'm gonna try to blitz through it as fast as I can. Oh, yeah, that's right, this boss. This guy is really easy. All you have to do is just hit him, let him fall, bait him into using his sword, and then that's it. Man, those colors in the background look really good through RGB. They really, really pop out. It was actually good I, I defeated him there, because uh, I would have died. I pretty much touched his sword, but he died first, so... That's good. So we are using the Super Nintendo through RGB, so the colors should definitely pop out a little bit more than usual in my Let's Plays. Uh, picture's gonna be sharper, and the frame rate is... Uh, going to be better as well. 60 frames versus 30. So this is our uh, final set of stages. And so this is where things can get uh, pretty tricky. But uh, if you take it really slow, you shouldn't really have much of a problem getting through it. You just gotta watch out for the penguins that come from uh, behind you, basically. Those are the biggest threats. Wow, I don't usually keep the skateboard all the way through, so that was pretty cool. Alright, so this level could be pretty tricky as well. Uh, you've only got this tiny little spotlight on you. And then it's a little difficult to see past that. Um, you can see, like, overlays or, like, outlines of objects that you can walk on and enemies and so forth outside of the light. Uh, but I recommend just taking this stage relatively slow. Because there are going to be some spiked areas as well. And again, spikes are bad, you'll, you'll die in one hit. Um... I actually kind of wish the game had more platforming like that, like more spike avoidance and stuff like that. Um, the game's actually relatively flat for the most part. You know, you get a lot of safe, flat platforms, basically, without much threat of, like, platforms and, or, or, or pits and stuff like that and environmental hazards. Um, the original Adventure Island games had usually a lot more pits and so forth and a little more tight jumping, and this game doesn't have a whole lot of that. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I, I like that this game's relaxing, whereas the 
first three Adventure Island games are very, very difficult games, uh, in, especially in comparison. So, you know, this is a nice change of pace. Um, but if you're an Adventure Island pro, uh, of the NES ones anyway, don't, uh, if you've never played this game before, don't expect insane difficulty here. Although, like I said, the final boss is a major pain, so we're, we're almost there. This is the final stage, basically, so we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna skip that bonus level. I don't really need uh, the extra lives and whatnot. So the boomerang is a lot better in this part because you can shoot vertically, and there's a lot of like these ghost demon looking things. Um, they usually come from right above you, so you want to just shoot vertically into them. You don't want to touch this platform there in the bottom right with the X's, that uh, will kill you in one hit. I learned that the hard way back in the day. See, so just shoot vertically, take out the monsters. I think there's going to be another one up here too, yep, right there. And another one there, and final boss time. So the final boss has two forms. Uh, both are relatively threatening. The first form can be a little random, but since we've got uh, max firepower, it might not be that bad. Okay, we're screwed. <laughs> I'm gonna go backwards because I I think I can get I think I can get like a boomerang or something. Yeah, so I'm not going to have the fire attack when I get back to the boss, which is going to be a shame, because that just means it's going to take a lot more hits. I will have three projectiles, but no more. I mean, obviously no more. You can't get more than three, but... You know, on the next stage, it basically turns the fire, and the fire is just considerably more powerful than your base... Your base weapon attacks without fire. So when he does that attack, he basically, uh, stones you. There we go. Alright, so now we're on to the final form. The final form is just... This is the part that's a major pain to me. Uh, for one, every time you get back to this fight, you have to go through this animation, this changeover again, which, you know, takes like 20 seconds or something like that. Um, so basically what you have to do is let this guy stomp where you are, and he basically weakens the bridge, uh, below you. And if you're not moving, <laughs> he's basically gonna land right on top of you, and so we have to do the whole thing over again, basically. So, six more tries. 
So this is exactly why, like, it's one of my least favorite uh, final bosses pretty much out there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh... Actually, I think the hammer was a bad idea. I mean, not just because of, like, the vertical enemies, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the firepower up, so... Yeah, what I... <sighs> shit. What I should have done is actually grab that boomerang, then went back, got the hammer, because then I'd be able to fire two hammers out. Um, and then there... I know there's two hammers up here. I think I'm just overthinking it. I don't think it really matters that much. I mean, it matters, but I think we'll be fine. Ah, screw it. Let's do it. Let's test that theory. I can't fall down now. Game doesn't want me to go back. Alright, so yeah, there's gonna be one more boomerang at the end. And that's why you want the fire. You could just you kill everything so much faster when you have fire. All right. Let's try this again. Like this boss would be so much better if you could just attack it. I wouldn't mind this boss at all if I could just attack it, but I can't attack it. Doesn't let you. And the timing is really weird too. It's really hard to tell when he's gonna make the jump, basically. Like, really hard. Yeah, we messed. Oh, we got it! Oh my god, we got it! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy we don't have to do that again. I hate repeating sections like this over and over again. It's one of my banes of existence uh, for retro games these days. Uh, yeah, if anybody's really familiar with that final boss, if you have like uh, a set pattern that always works 100% of the time, let me know. Uh, I don't think there is a set pattern though on that final boss. And so you just kind of, it's really hard to tell when he's about to jump at you. There's no like, like animation indication like he doesn't like move his eyes or anything or like twitch or you know in a lot of games like this so like there will be some kind of like boss movement or sound or something that tells you hey i'm gonna move right now so you can plan for it basically but here no it's that that's what's really tough about it um but yeah super adventure island guys uh nothing really crazy for the ending uh, just pretty relaxed and chilled like the rest of the game for the most part. And, uh, yeah, great game though. I mean, aside from the final boss, I mean, I love Super Adventure Island. It's, I play it a couple times a year just because it's, it's fun. It's relaxing. Like, it's one of those games I could play like late at night when I'm really tired. Um, and it's just, it's fun. So, if you guys haven't played it before, I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to say thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the Let's Play. If uh, you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, I've got a ton of content on my channel here you can check out. 
uh, and plenty more to come as well. So, and for everybody, everybody else already subbed, um, if, if I can talk, uh, <laughs> thanks for the subs, guys. Thanks for your continued support, and I'll catch you guys soon. So, take it easy, y'all.